Uh, today, we're going to be talking about microphones. So I want to go over this. This is one of the most common microphones. This is called the Shure SM58. And you see this microphone all over the place. It's been an industry standard for a long time, many, 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 many years, plus a couple more. The uh, Shure SM58, you'll see at rock concerts uh, out in the field. This one you don't see too often in the studio, but uh, we'll get there in just a little bit. Uh, the reason why is uh, for a, a couple of reasons. But this is a kind of a generic microphone that you'll see all over the place. I want to go over the anatomy of a microphone to start things off. So this is uh, kind of what we're looking at. We've got the armature, uh, basically the part that you hold, and it holds the rest of the piece together. Right here, we have what's called a wind screen. So that's going to reduce the number of popped peas whenever you're recording. So if you're speaking directly into it, uh, if you take this thing off, it looks like this. So there's your wind screen, and right in there is what it's covering, which is the uh, the capsule right there. Okay, uh, but there you go. Right there is a capsule, and right here, uh, you're talking to it this way. Tickety talk, and your sound waves come in, boom, boom, and hit this diaphragm right there. It's called the diaphragm, and the diaphragm is what captures those sound waves. So there you go. So it's kind of the uh, the basic anatomy of it. You've got the armature, you've got the capsule. You get the diaphragm, which is part of the capsule right there. Capsule, capture, ah, capture sound. Ah, that's a good way to remember it. The diaphragm right there is uh, circular and uh, so similar to your diaphragm muscle. And again, there is the wind screen. All right, cool. So that's kind of the anatomy of the microphone. A couple other things I want to point out for anatomy of a microphone. This this microphone right here is also an industry standard. We've got a couple of these here in the station, and you'll see these all over the place. This is the Electra Voice RE20 microphone. So this is the RE20, uh, very common microphone, especially in the radio industry. Right here, this is what I want to show you right here. This is called a pop filter. So the pop filter is right there. So it also reduces those bilabial plosives or the popped P's. So bilabial Two lips, ba 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 ba, labial plosives, boom, explosions. So popped peas, popped bees, puh, puh. even a, a strong huh, duh, duh, uh, that will create a bilabial plosive or a plosive. So uh, there is that. So there's the pop filter. The wind screen is right here, and those two oftentimes get confused. But the pop filter windscreen and I think we've beaten this microphone to death. So uh, there is that. The other thing I want to point out is this mic clip right here. So this mic clip back over here that attaches the microphone to the uh, to the boom arm or the uh, the holder. Uh, you got a couple of different way places that you can attach to. This is rigid so it's not very forgiving. If you come in here and touch this microphone your recording is going to sound like the world's ending. So you don't want to do that with this uh, this in place. Also, if you pound the table, if this thing's a table-mounted microphone stand, if you pound the table, if somebody's getting really excited, jaw, 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 uh, this thing is going to vibrate, and you're going to pick that up also. So how do you prevent that? Well, you use this right here. It's called a shock mount. Shock mount right there. Again, I'm going to have all this in the, uh, the little paper for you for your anatomy diagram that's all going to be labeled for you but right here you have a shock mount and here is a mic clip so mic clip shock mount so there you go well what's the shock mount do for you let's take a look in action boom there it is so this re20 is in a shock mount and what this does it's got rubber bands basically it's uh these this rubber housing and it that serves as uh well it, it, it prevents shock so if you bang on the table with this thing those vibrations will carry through to this metal part, but they tend not to carry as much through this rubber that's housing the microphone right there. So if somebody pounds on the table, oh, yeah, yeah. if you've got an ape in studio and it pounded on the table and saying rah, 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 uh, those pounds at least are not going to get picked up nearly as much as <laughs> your, your ape talent uh, saying rah, 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 rah. So uh, this is very helpful. 
it's not very easy to use out in this in the uh, field though if you want to go set this thing up uh, it's it's not easy to pack around you can't really throw it in a quick little bag and set it up very easily at uh, say a remote location or so so usually you'll find these in studios uh the mic clips though on the other hand those generally you'll find in the field so uh easy to throw uh throw a microphone on a tabletop mic stand with a uh, mic clip here's the connector that we uh, use to get the microphone audio that the we, we talked already earlier this semester about the microphone converting sound wave energy into electrical energy and that electrical energy goes through the microphone, it comes out into this XLR connector. XLR. So it's this three, three connection thing with a latch right here. And uh, there's also a little piece of rubber in there to insulate it. And there's the rubber piece back there as well. So there you go. If you look on over here, you're going to see this XLR connector. And uh, tends to be that i'll just give you this in general It's a really good rule of thumb that somebody pointed out to me not too many years ago i wish you would have learned this earlier is that the audio comes out of this is called the male connector this is the female connector so it comes out of the male connector and generally goes into the female connector on the other end of that female connector it'll come out like this so you get a pins coming out this way going in this way so that's the route of audio so no matter what you're looking at the male connector is generally sending audio or sending voltage out. The female is accepting it and moving it down the line a little bit further. So that was really helpful for me in, in a whole lot of circumstances like, well, is this the out or is this the in? Well, this one's the out. Audio is coming out. So I want to point that out. Very, very helpful for, uh, for the future. Uh, so that's an XLR uh, connector. How do they get the term XLR? Well, the Canon company many years ago came out with this connector and it was their model x connector oh hi guys we got a brand new connector for our microphones we're going to call it the model x uh because those previous ones uh, they weren't they weren't that great anyway so it's the model x there's a latch on it so it helps it pro from just coming unplugged and it's also got that rubber insulation in there so they took the x they took the l they took the r and they called it the canon xlr connector and now you're going to be a hit at parties Everybody will be amazed by your knowledge of microphones. So that's the Canon XLR connector. That's uh, one that we use very commonly in the uh, audio field, in the uh, radio industry. Let's get into the different types of microphones that you may find or you may see. Uh, this is a carbon microphone. And we're going to build one of these probably in the next class or two. This is an old microphone, super duper old technology. It's got some carbon granules in it. Well, what are carbon granules? Well, take carbon, like charcoal or so, or so and crush it up. And um, you throw it in there between two, uh, two plates or basically two pieces of like aluminum foil. Or, uh, well, you can do a couple of different ways. But basically, you have a diaphragm, you have a fixed plate, uh, and you throw carbon granules between it. And then you speak into that diaphragm. And what happens is that the electricity potential changes as you speak into it. So those sound waves are coming in and they move the carbon granules in relationship to the uh, sound waves. And it also um, basically takes that vibration and mimics it with voltage. So you send a voltage through this as the semiconductor, a carbon is, is a semiconductor, it uh, varies that voltage in accordance with your sound waves. And that's one of the things that uh, good old Mr. Edison came up with many, many years ago, back in the 1800s. So this was a very popular type of microphone for a long, long period of time. And again, invented by our good friend, Mr. Thomas Edison. Well, uh, you also saw it for over a hundred years. I think I mentioned this earlier. If you look in phones from the 1970s and this one's from the 80s this is uh, i think a bell south phone that they would rent to you um before my bell got broken up many many years ago but this is back in the 80s i think this is like 1985 84 something like that right here is the receiver you talk into that you listen in this but right here is the microphone for that telephone if you crack this thing open inside you'll see this little thing and this is a carbon microphone so 
this uses the same technology as this. This uses the same technology as this. So it's kind of interesting. It lasted for over 100 years. So Edison invented something pretty great. Uh, he also invented films, and they're still going pretty strong. So anyway, uh, but right in here, you find a layer of plastic. Under that are the carbon granules. And then under that is just a little metal plate right there. So as you speak into this, this little, you can see the little plastic in there. It vibrates as you talk into it. And on the back right here, you've got a little uh, wire that will attach right here. Boop, and a little wire that will attach right here. Boop. So those are the contacts. And uh, basically, it, it uh, takes that voltage and uh, you put a little voltage across it. You speak into it. And as your sound waves move back and forth, that voltage varies in accordance with that. So that's how the carbon microphone worked. Uh, carbon microphone. So again, super simple technology, very robust technology. It didn't sound great, but it certainly worked and they they refined it over the years. So it, it got to be a lot better than it was. Let's take a look at a couple of different types of microphones. We're going to cover the uh, dynamic microphone. We'll cover the condenser microphone. We'll also cover the ribbon microphone. I found this video uh, on the YouTubes and I think it's really super duper helpful. I'm going to mute it and I'll narrate along the way. Let's take a quick look at the dynamic microphone. This is a SM58 is the one that we saw earlier. So this is mimicking the SM58. Let's crack it open and uh, take a look at it as it does in the animation right here. So again, the SM58 is an industry standard, especially for field recording. You'll see these at mic uh, these microphones in concerts. You can drop these uh, all over the place. It's no problem at all. Right inside, you'll see this big coil of wire. And that coil of wire, it's relatively heavy. It's attached to this diaphragm over here. Let's keep on rolling this thing. There you go. Boom. What's going on here? Big coil of wire. Inside this coil of wire is a magnet. And what happens whenever you put... Um, a coil of wire, you move a coil of wire around a magnet, it creates voltage. It automatically creates voltage. It's the electromagnetic effect. And what happens? You're speaking into this diaphragm. So sound waves are moving this diaphragm back and forth. And as that diaphragm is moving, this whole co coil of wire is moving on the outside of that magnet inside. So one of the wires up here is connected, goes down through these wires down here. And the other side is connected down there as well. So just a big coil, a big loop of wire. So one side, boop, the other side comes out, boop, goes down there. And this whole thing moves back and forth and it creates this voltage in accordance with your sound waves. So whenever you speak, it's creating that voltage and uh, it varies in accordance with your sound waves. So that's what it's showing right there, moving back and forth and creating that voltage along the way. And that's how a dynamic microphone works. Dynamic microphones are super robust. There's a guy um, several years ago at, over the uh, National Association of Broadcasters that was taking uh, a, a dynamic mic. It wasn't the SM58, but a similar one. And he was plugging it in, talking into it, bringing people over with PA system he was using. He said, hey, guys, come check this out. And then he would disconnect it from the XLR connector and he would take a nail and hammer it into a four by four, bam, 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 all the way down. He'd plug it back up and say, hey, it still works. And it sounded just as good as it did before. So these things are really robust and you can drop them. You'll see my concerts, people drop the mic, boom. Uh, that's a dynamic mic because it's not going to kill it generally. So there is that. So they're robust, they're durable. They can be relatively inexpensive. They don't cost a whole lot. They're, um, they're, they, they're just robust. They, they work really well. They don't need power. They generate their own power. And we'll get into the frequency response and anything like that. But, yep, let's move along. Come on, come on, come on. There is a ribbon microphone. It works on a similar principle. It's the electromagnetic effect. So if you look inside of a ribbon microphone, it's got this long, big old, big old, big old, big old ribbon of metal up here at the top it's connected to a piece of metal and it goes down to one of these wires down here it's connected to another plate of metal and that goes to another wire Boop. on the sides right here you have these fixed magnets so this piece of metal moves back and forth as you speak into it boop, 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 moves back and forth and it generates through the electromagnetic effect because you have these magnets right here 
another voltage. So pretty much the same principle, electromagnetic uh, principle. But the cool thing about this is that you don't have this huge coil of wire that you're moving back and forth. It's this very, very thin and therefore very, very light piece of metal right there. So it's a much more accurate uh, microphone. So you can pick up very high frequencies very easily. Um, so the, 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 what do they call it? The, um, the fidelity of this, it, it basically captures the full range of human hearing. So from 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz, where the dynamic microphone had a difficult time uh, recording those high frequency uh, recordings, those high frequency sounds. It had a difficult time doing that on the top end. The ribbon microphone has a much easier time doing that on the uh, high end. So one of the problems though we get with ribbon microphones is that since this thing is so so thin and so fragile, um, you uh, you tend to, it's really sensitive. So if you drop this thing, boom, this thing is gonna break and your mic's gonna be broken. So you can't drop the microphone on this. You can drive the microphone, it's just not going to work again. Uh, so if you scream into the microphone, you can boom, blow this, blow this thing out and that ribbon of metal will break. Again, it's very fragile, it's very sensitive, very fragile. You see these in studios. You generally don't see these in the field. And uh, if you do, you'll probably wanna bring it back into the studio because it shouldn't be out in the field. So uh, that is called a ribbon microphone and that's uh, how it works. That's what it's used for. The frequency response is generally pretty, pretty, pretty good. Next, oh, look at this, it's gonna break. Scream into it. I think they I think they break this one. Let's see. Yo, there it goes. Oh my goodness. Did you see that? Boom, it blew apart. So that's a problem with the ribbon microphone. Next, we've got uh let's let's look at the condenser microphone. A condenser microphone. This is an AKG uh style microphone. You'll see these in studios all over the world. But here you go. So this is a condenser microphone. The, the other type of microphone, the final type that we're going to be talking about today. Condenser, why in Britain, they call a capacitor a condenser. Oh, yes, they do, which is why we call this a condenser microphone, because it's essentially a capacitor. What are you talking about with all this electronic stuff? Uh, here's the deal. We give a voltage to this, so we supply some power already. So we charge or we send electricity to this plate over here, and the other charge is coming off right here. You see these two wires. So red going in here, the green coming down here, and we have a battery or a power supply over here and we feed electricity to it. So that creates this charged plate right here and electrons flow to the other plate, to the, the, uh, the diaphragm or vice versa. So usually it's going to be 48 volts that are just kind of flowing across as you speak into this diaphragm, it gets closer on those compression waves. The diaphragm right here, the plate gets closer to this fixed plate. And therefore more electrons can flow across because they're closer, more electrons will flow across. As this pulls this way on that rarefaction wave, they have a farther way to go. So there's gonna be less electrons flowing across. And as you speak back and forth, those sound waves going back and forth, that creates that very uh, that creates that variation in voltage in accordance with your sound wave. So that's how you get you change the sound waves into electrical vibrations. So that's how a com condenser microphone works. Again, it's a capacitor essentially. So that's how that works. Is it moves back and forth. You'll see that variation in voltage right there as they're trying to show you. Uh, these are really pretty sensitive also. I don't think they're as sensitive as a ribbon microphone, but if you scream into this thing, uh, one of the problems that you'll get, let me roll this back for just a second. There you go. Oh, let's roll over. Oh, there you go. As you scream into this thing, and again, these are really pretty close to each other. You've got the diaphragm and you've got that fixed plate right there. As you scream into this thing, this diaphragm can actually, boom, touch that fixed plate. That causes problems. Basically, you short out your microphone and then your microphone is dead and no longer works. So that's one of the problems that we run into with condenser microphones. They are very sensitive. You don't want to drop it 
you don't want to scream into it because it'll short the microphone out. This is a different type of uh, condenser microphone, but pretty much the same thing right there. So those are the different types of microphones that I wanted to present to you. There's a couple of different pickup patterns as you speak into the microphone. Let's say I'm over here and I'm talking into this SM58 microphone. The SM58 has a, a cardioid uh, pickup pattern, heart-shaped, cardioid, cardiac arrest, cardioid. So if you look at this, if I'm over here talking directly into the microphone, it picks me up really well. But this pattern over here shows how well it picks up. It's called the pickup pattern. If I'm over here talking into the microphone, if I'm back over here, if I'm talking into the back of the microphone, it shows that it's not going to pick me up very well. So if I'm talking into the back of an SM58 microphone, it's not going to pick me up very well at all. Talking to the front, it picks me up best. If I'm talking to it on the side, it's pretty good. Over here, pretty good. A little bit less, a little bit less. If I talk over here, if I'm talking this way, the pattern over here, it's not going to pick me up very well. So there's a cardioid pickup pattern. Are there others? Why, yes, my friend, there certainly are. Here's the omnidirectional pickup pattern. So no matter where you are around this microphone, it will pick up your audio just as easily and with the same fidelity. So this is really cool. If you're in a room and you have multiple guests in studio in a roundtable situation, you may want to go with an omnidirectional pickup pattern microphone. And that way everybody will be picked up. Uh, that microphone will pick up everybody's audio equally. Here's another one, which is uh, called a bi-directional bi microphone, also called a figure eight microphone. So figure eight, look at that, eight, nice. But there you go. So on both sides of the microphone, uh, you get picked up really well. So I can have maybe a conversation with one person. I can use one microphone and I can be on this side. The other person can be on this side and the microphone will pick us, pick us up very easily on both sides of that. There are some variations to that basic cardioid pattern. This is called a super cardioid pattern. So if you look at it, you got the main cardioid pattern. Uh, if you look right here, it doesn't pick up very well on the sides. It picks up very kind of directional right in front. You got to be right in front of it. It also has this little lobe in the back back here. So if you do talk into it from the rear, it can actually pick you up a little bit, but not nearly as much as talking directly in front of it. These are used for more directional recordings. If you're in a, uh, a meeting, for example, and you want to pick up that person, a specific person, um, you want to get the microphone right in front of them because other people are talking around them. You don't want to pick up those people. You want to pick up the person that you're, you're aiming the microphone at. This might be a really good choice for you, that super cardioid uh, pickup pattern. Here's the, uh, the main patterns that we run into with the, those polar patterns, the polar pickup patterns. This is showing the omnidirectional pickup pattern. We saw the figure eight pickup pattern right there. This is the standard cardioid pickup pattern. There's the super cardioid pickup pattern. We just saw that. There's also another version of it. It's called the hypercardioid pickup pattern, which is this one right here. So that lobe is a little bit bigger uh, right here, but it's more directional than the uh, supercardioid. Here's the hypercardioid, a little bit more directional. So it's going to reduce the number, uh, the uh, reduce the pickup of the people on the side, and it's going to be much more directional. This one is kind of the most directional. This one's called a shotgun pickup pattern. This is called a shotgun pickup pattern. So if you're in a meeting and it's a big room and you really want to train your microphone on the person that's speaking kind of across the room, the shotgun microphone is probably the one that you want to go with. So it's going to reduce the stuff, uh, the, the ambient noise to the side, and it's just going to pick up the person right in front of you. It's got that lobe in the back, so you got to be aware of that. You might want to just be really quiet whenever you're using this thing, but that's called a shotgun pickup pattern. So there you have it. There it is. That's what you need to know about microphones. Um,